Before we begin, I want to welcome back to our committee, um, Dr. Greg Murphy. We have been missing you, and it is a pleasure and honor to have you back. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just want to say thank you to um, everybody, all the uh, thoughts and prayers and everything um, for this journey of mine. I, I couldn't have done it without it, and prayer is always answered, so thank you all very, very much. Thank you, sir. I also want to take a moment to extend our sympathy on behalf of the committee to Representative Sanchez um, her, and her team on the recent loss of her staff member, Chandler McCall Mason. Before Representative Sanchez, she also worked for another Ways and Means Committee member, Representative Evans. So um, please know that, that you all are in our thoughts and our prayers in this tough time. Um, over the last few, few months, Americans watched in shock as many elite colleges and universities descended into chaos and allowed anti-Semitism to run unchecked, in many instances leading to violence, harassment, and threats against Jewish students. Despite what appeared from the outside as clear violations of campus policy and rules, and perhaps even the law, Leaders at these prestigious schools simply sat back and did nothing. Instead, it appears that universities are putting radical ideologies over the safety and well-being of Jewish students. Today, the Ways and Means Committee will be considering legislation that helps hold colleges and universities accountable for violating a student's civil rights and protect students on campus from rampant anti-Semitism and harassment. We will also consider legislation that helps parents save for their kids' K through 12 education expenses and a bill protecting American taxpayer dollars from going to China. On college campuses, the ongoing explosion of anti-Semitism has shined a spotlight on the ways colleges have ceased to be centers of higher learning. They accept billions from foreign nations and hire armies of lobbyists that protect their financial bottom lines. But when it comes to protecting students on their campus, that is truly a different story. For months, this committee has investigated anti-Semitic behavior at these so-called elite universities. And we have found that weak university leadership has failed to protect students enforce their policies, and discipline students and faculty who violate them. Radical faculty have emboldened students to take part in anti-Semitic activity and have themselves broken campus policies. And dark foreign influences and in some international students have helped fuel these protests. In these ways, colleges and universities are failing to fulfill their educational purpose on which their generous tax-exempt status rests. Legislation before us today will impose real financial consequences on universities that continue to turn a blind eye to anti-Semitism while allowing a small fringe to rule their campuses. At a previous hearing, a Jewish student testified that the only meaningful change on campus came as a result of House Republicans' investigation. We need to ensure these universities step up and start protecting Jewish students in compliance with federal law. Our first bill up would levy new penalties on universities found by a court to have violated a student's civil rights, including dis discrimination against Jewish students. Our second bill helps incentivize institutions to admit more American students into colleges or universities. At some Ivy League schools, foreign students make up as much as half of the student body. This bill will align the tax code with a definition used to determine who is eligible for federal financial assistance under the Higher Education Act specifically for purposes of calculating which schools are subject to the endowment tax. Only the, same students, only the same students who are eligible for financial assistance 
under the Higher Education Act will be counted as part of the endowment tax calculations. This would exclude students on temporary student visas, which would incentivize schools to give more American students the opportunity to go to college. Without additional changes, current data suggests this bill will expand the scope of the endowment tax to about a dozen additional schools. Our committee has focused on ways to improve K through 12 and post-secondary education in other ways as well. In October, parents and leaders shared powerful testimony about how their lives changed when they had access to more avenues to get a quality education and workforce opportunities. The message was clear. Parents want to be able to give their children a better education and more opportunities for a better future. To that end, Legislation introduced by Congressman Hearn allows 529 accounts to cover educational expenses for both K through 12 schooling and technical training. It would cover materials like books, tutoring, educational therapies for students with disabilities, and supplies for homeschooling. This provision builds on the Trump tax cuts that allowed 529s to cover up to $10,000 per year for K through 12 tuition expenses. In 2019, the Student Empowerment Act, which the same provisions was included in, the Bipartisan Secure Act, reported unanimously out of the Ways and Means Committee. However, the provision was removed by then Speaker Nancy Pelosi before the legislation made it to the House floor. A four-year degree isn't right for everyone. Americans who want to learn a trade or a skill deserve the same shot at their dreams. That's why this bill covers tuition, fees, books, and other costs related to technical training. Joining Congressman Hearn in introducing the Education and Workforce Freedom Act are Congressman Whitman, Collins, and Finstad. I'd also like to recognize them for their leadership in expanding 529 accounts to cover additional workforce opportunities, including Americans seeking to become pilots. Between their three bills, they have amassed 377 bipartisan co-sponsors this Congress. Separately, we are, all considering we are also considering legislation from Congresswoman Miller to overturn a Biden administration regulation allowing companies tied to the Chinese Communist Party to profit from American tax dollars. The Biden administration is sacrificing our economic independence in order to force more Americans to drive an electric vehicle. This rule should concern Democrats just as it does Republicans for being a direct a direct contradiction of the language of the so-called Inflation Reduction Act. If President Biden vetoes this CRA, he is leaving the door wide open to making the American taxpayer China's piggy bank. I hope my colleagues will join me in advancing these bills through the committee and to the House floor. 